Jason Couch one and oh versus Robert Smith but throw that out the window the window this is mano a mano now both players very loose during the uh, commercial breaks joking with the crowd Robert Smith said I'm not tweaking my game I'm just going to keep throwing it harder and harder that's what he's done it's the recipe for success this week again Jason Couch I'm telling you Randy you got to hold your breath. <laughs> it's just. Hey, when you're feeling it, you know, just getting it that close to the edge is not a problem. You're throwing it good. You're making good shots. These guys have been doing this for so long. It's, you know, it's like a second nature for them. I, I, I think the advantage, though, has got to go to Robert Smith. He's throwing the same ball in both lanes. Well, he's rolling it well. Jason has to go back and forth using two different balls, but Robert Smith. The first game used a different ball. Did you see these two shots in the first match? Semifinal number two, different ball, same line. Goes to a weaker ball so he doesn't have to move around on the lane. <laughs> I don't want any of that. Really. I don't either. I'll just stay right here in my seat and you just give it to Jason. Robert Smith is in a groove, folks. And you know who he gives a lot of credit to? The youngster, Richie Allen. Says they roomed together last week in North Carolina. He said, Richie, because this young kid helped my mental attitude. He just reminded me what it was like to have fun and just get out and bowl and not think about everything. And it's helped him this week. He should give Richie Allen some of the cash, don't you uh, think? Yeah, I think 10% cuts. I think uh, it would be good. Not out of the question. Not a little something for the effort? <laughs> a little something for the effort. There's Jason Couch opening the first frame of the strike. Two different balls. <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> I watched him in practice on that lane, and he went high the last ball he threw on that lane. A strike for Jason Couch, and he'll go up 10. How about that, 138,000 fifth, but if he wins, he'll move up to number two on the money winning list for this year, trailing Parker Bowman the third. Look out. Whoa, boy. A result of what happened on the right lane, ball crossing over going high. This ball wants to give room as you saw Parker Bowman the third, Jason's buddy and the guy that used to own this tournament. That's right. Look at that. 12th board out to the one board. That defies a law of gravity. <laughs> You know, Sir Isaac right now is saying, hey, man, that's not supposed to be that way. Well, you better have power to create friction to get the ball back from that spot. Oh, a little shaky here, the, the uh, last couple of frames for Jason. And that, that board that you're seeing, remember, that's at the arrows. That's not down the lane. Down the lane, Jason's ball is about the 1-2 board. At the arrows, that's where it's being located and being picked up, right just uh, inside the second arrow. So... Good 10-12 uh, board swing for him. Oh, well, still both players once. giving each other the opportunity. You know, Robert Smith is runner-up, of course, to Chris Barnes, the rookie of the year. But the big three came out that year, Randy. You had Chris Barnes, you had Patrick Keeley, you had Robert Smith. And a lot of pressure was on Robert Smith and Chris and Patrick to see if they can play with the big boys. Sure, you want to come out and show those guys on the PBA Tour who the top dog is. Three rack. Three rack. All right, where's my take at? Well, we have our PBA question of the week that you can get on PBA.com. We'll read it. This one's from Larry Smith of Memphis, Tennessee. Is there an age requirement to join the PBA and compete in PBA events? We'll have the answer coming up in just a minute. Or we have time right now. Randy, you can answer it. Well, you have to be over 18. And if you're not, you got to get parental consent. You also have to average over 200 for two years. And uh, it doesn't hurt to have some money behind you to, yeah. to allow yourself to compete week in and week out. If you're under 18, uh, get a note from mom and dad. Larry, by the way, for having your question selected, we're going to send you a PBA prize package. That ball didn't come back. Yeah, it was a little, right. little to the right and a All little right. quick and a little less hand, but it stayed on the lane. You can see that ball speed creeping up just a pinch. And that was a little bit further right than what Robert wanted. Hmm. 
Got to be careful here. Well, see, when you shoot the 2 8, you have that much power. The, fat, the, the uh, trouble pin is the back pin, the 8 pin. But Robert could probably Robert shoot the 2 8 and then another pin behind it. His ball's so strong, probably take all three of them out. Well, here's a guy right now that's not only in a battle for this championship, the title, the money, but also he's in a battle for PBA Player of the Year. I mean, you talk about Parker Bone, you talk about Pete Weber. There's a lot riding on this for Jason Couch. Jason's put in over 100 hours of practice with Richard Shockley as coach, lowering his rev rate the last two years. That's a nice little carry hit there. He also made a grip change run. He went to forward pitch in the thumb, which helped him to relax his hand. For those of you watching at home, you want to try to learn how to hook it like the big boys. Learn how to keep your hand nice and relaxed so you can make that snapping motion at the bottom of the swing. Get the fingers underneath or in the bottom of the part of the ball and translate or, or, or make the weight go, transfer from the thumb to the fingers as fast as you can. That creates revolutions. This is to go up by 12 if he is able to strike. The power of the lefty against the power of the righty. We are in the finals in Latham, New York. And after five frames, right now, Jason Couch is our leader by 12. We'll step aside for the finals from New York right after this. No way. Dude wins every night. Yeah. Every game. Every time. And then? Row, including a 3-6-10 in the fifth, but then he struck in the sixth. Jason Couch asking for yet another re-rack in this game. Now let's just talk about his speed and also the boards. Here's the one that went Brooklyn, 16th board. He comes back on that lane and gets it two boards to the left, goes dead flush. Too far left and too firm. He told us yesterday, Ron, that to separate the men from the boys, you have to be versatile on our tour. And the big question mark for Jason Couch is can he hold it together under pressure? It's easy to That's revert right. back and overthrow and over it. Because he has to stay aggressive in this situation, but he has got to be careful not get too pumped up. Well, he's able to pick up that spare, and there is the proprietor here at the Bowlers Club, Carol Judge. Carol has been a gracious host this entire week to all of us, and we do thank Carol for her hospitality. They've been very kind to us this whole week. I like it. 